I'm scheduled for a nuclear stress test soon. What is the alternative? If I were scheduled for a nuclear stress test and I didn't have the following, a good CIMT, and Michelle can help you in terms of finding that, Michelle's number, 859-721-1414. That's 859-721-1414. Because of the challenges with standardization, there's only a few places I would recommend getting a CIMT. Anybody can get a calcium score. Those are really easy to standardize. So your local x-rays or us usually can provide that. And if you haven't had those two already, I would not get the stress test yet. I mean, you heard the rest of this content. I'd think once, twice, three times, and maybe 10 times before I got a nuclear stress test, because it's not going to predict your heart attack. It's not going to provide what you think it will. Unless you're just wanting to know a little bit more about your exercise capacity, it will tell you that. But again, you know, that's sort of like what happened to Tim Russert. He said, Doc, we're worried about what my heart attack and stroke risk. Why don't we get a stress test? They got it. He passed it in flying colors and died at work a couple of months later from a heart attack. And the pathologist said the inside of his arteries looked like the face of a teenager with a bad case of acne. If you don't know what that means, again, think back about what we've just been talking about, oxidation and the impact on arteries. So CIMT, calcium score, CT angiogram, all of those are alternatives that I would go for first before I agreed to a nuclear stress test. Good question. Mezzanine, had a stress test five years back after feeling sluggish. I did fantastic. My cardiologist told me I had the heart of a 30-year-old. I was 51. A calcium score three weeks later revealed a score of 64. You're so right. Thank you so much, Mezzanine. Thank you for sharing that. It's one thing to hear some crazy doc up ranting and raving about something, but it's something else to hear somebody, a patient, who says, yeah, happened to me. So let me tell you why this kind of thing happens. We have the assumption going in that any plaque is going to show up on a stress test. And that's not at all the case. In fact, things don't show up on a stress test until you've get, gotten between 50 and 60 percent occlusion of the flow of blood. Well, if you understand what really causes a heart attack, in other words, you have soft plaque, that plaque releases a little bit of that hot liquid plaque that's been softened by oxidation. That hot liquid plaque then forms a clot and the clot causes the heart attack. Not the plaque itself, but the clot that comes from the soft plaque. So when you understand that that's what causes the heart attack, you can begin to understand why somebody like Tim Russert would have a totally normal stress test. And somebody like mezzanine here could have the arteries in the heart of a 30 year old on a stress test. As I mentioned, it's great for showing you your exercise capacity, but it's not so good at showing you whether you have plaque. And guess what? You say, well, it still has some predictive stuff or people wouldn't use it. No, there's no question. If your heart's in great shape, you're less likely to have a heart attack. But guess what? One to two thirds of heart attacks occur in people with less than 50% occlusion of their blood flow. So in other words, people like mezzanine who had plaque, but not enough to impact the flow of blood. So if you've got, if one to two thirds of the people that have plaque, but not enough to show up on a stress test, guess what? That's exactly why you can pass stress tests with flying colors and still die from a heart attack like Tim Russert did.